Hey everyone, I'm Anna Hutzmaker from Hutzmaker Violins and you found another one of our Student Stuck at Home series. This is another one that's for Mrs. Flynn's class in Newburgh, New York. This was her idea to do a couple of videos on cases and storage and transportation for our instruments. So thank you Mrs. Flynn, I hope this is what you had in mind. Um, now we did violins and violas a couple days ago and today we're going to do cellos and basses. They require a few little extra special details, and um, so I wanted to teach you about them, especially because a lot of you guys might not ever need to put cases on cellos and basses those first couple of years that you play. I don't know about where you live, but here in the North Atlanta area, the violins and violas are red instruments. They carry them back and forth to school, but the cellos and basses often for that first year, maybe the first two years, they use the ones at school. So they may actually go for a couple of years never having to handle a case. So I want to teach you the important things you need to know so when you get your instrument, you know how to handle it. The most important rule for a soft case, we're going to start with the cello, but this also goes for the bass. The most important rule is take the bow out before you take the case off. Now, I've already taken the bows out of these cases, but you want to make sure bow comes out first goes in last when you pack it up. Very important rule. And basically, cellos are pretty easy. These cases, they come with two kinds of cases, I should say. Um, the first is a soft case. This is what most of you will have if you have a rental cello. Um, and your schools often will have soft cases. They're made of canvas. Sometimes they're extra padded. And they're pretty easy. They just slip on and off, usually, like an overcoat. And the main thing to know is you do everything from the top. Take it off from the top, put it back onto the scroll first. And again, there's not a bow in there. So also, a lot of these soft cases will have backpack straps, which are wonderful. I do want to give you a fair little warning. When you put a backpack strap on, you all of a sudden become a good foot and a half taller than you used to. It's not a big deal if you're like me and five feet tall, but if you're a six foot tall kid, Going through doorways can be a problem. Keep that in mind. Now, if you don't have a soft case, or later when you step up and buy a nicer cello, you're going to move to a hard case. And hard cases is cool. Now, don't you love how I just totally packed up that cello? And I need to still use it as an example. So let's take this case off again. You see how easy it is. Mostly. <laughs> now. This is a hard case. This is one of my favorite hard cases at the shop because the young lady that traded it in had a fabulous sense of style. I always joke and say hard cases are just a vehicle for the bumper stickers. You can express yourself. But, as you can see, it is literally a hard case. They come in different weights. They come in different sizes. Some of them are lighter but very strong. Um, some of them can be quite heavy. And the cello just slips in. They'll have, each have different things, but most of them have Velcro here. So you can strap your cello in. Now, here is the most important thing to know about hard cases. Please do not put your cello in it like this and walk away. This is amazingly unstable. And when you close it up and you latch everything, Please do not walk away and leave it like this. If you're backstage at any youth orchestra rehearsal or concert across the country, you'll see all these cellos standing like this. Again, they're surprisingly not very stable. And if someone's walking by and they bump into it with a purse or a backpack, it will go over. Don't let the words hard case fool you. No case is completely accident proof. A cello in a hard case can fall over and you could still get an $800 sound post crack if you're not careful. So, when you put it in its hard case, I want you to then always put it on its side. And a lot of times, a lot of times you'll actually see musicians, they'll do all their unpacking and packing in a hard case with it down on its back. So when I see somebody with that, doing it like that, I think that's a person who really knows what they're doing and they have a really nice cello, because that is the most stable way to do it. Now, we always tell you when you um, are at home, if you're not actually playing, to keep your instrument in the case. But the truth of the matter is, as you can see, 
packing and unpacking your instrument, if it's a cello or a bass, it can get to be a bit of a pain. And for a lot of young people, that will discourage them from practicing. They're like, oh, I gotta unpack it. It's so much hard work. You know, we're very difficult to please sometimes. So, if you have the opportunity at some point for your birthday or for Christmas or for Hanukkah, ask for your parents to buy you a stand. Now, this is a metal cello stand. You can get them at most violin shops. Go to your local violin shop. If you're not lucky enough to have one in your area, you can get one online. But the instrument just sits right on it. And my favorite thing about these stands is they have a hook on the back for your bow. So your bow can just hang there. Now, if you live in a very fancy, fancy house and your mom likes your living room to look really super beautiful and classy, then you can invest in a cello holder like this. They're quite nice. You can get them in all different kinds of woods. Um, but as you notice, there's not a place for the bow. So I kind of like it when there's a place for your bow. So that's your two kinds of cello cases. Now let's talk about your bass cases. So bass cases, just like your cello case, you're going to take the bow out first. I've already checked. There's no bow in here. A lot of times you'll just start this laying on the ground because it's pretty big and it's kind of clumsy. And they'll have these long zippers. Now, before I actually take this off, I'm going to show you. Jonathan will show you with the camera. This particular case has a hole in it where the end pin goes. Some of your cases will be like this. Some of them will have it where the two zippers actually meet at the end pin. If you have one where the two zippers meet at the end pin, don't zip it over the end pin. Then if you do that every time you're standing up with your base, then um, it tears up the zipper and makes a mess of it. So this one has a hole and you wanna notice because when I go to take this off, if I don't deal with this first, it's gonna be kind of a pain. So you wanna go ahead and get that out of that hole. And then it's just as simple as unzipping. Now, you'll see a lot of people fighting with the base when they're taking off a case or putting one on. And I think that's because they're working too hard. The case, again, slips on and off, just like an overcoat, but it'll be much easier if you will keep the base low. Keep the scroll down here and slide it on and off. See, this is a piece of cake. It's when I try and do it like this, and I'm like, this is much harder to do. Get the scroll down low, tilt it, bring the case to the base is what I like to tell people. Now, there are, there technically are such things as hard cases for bases, but they're not really for most of us. Hard cases for a string base are for shipping. So if you play in the Atlanta Symphony and you get a job with the Honolulu Symphony, you're gonna to need to get a shipping crate, a hard case for your base so you can fly it over there. But for the rest of us, our base cases are soft. They come in different degrees of padding, but they're gonna be soft. That metal cello stand that I showed you, they also go for string bass, and they're pretty awesome. You can hang your bow on it again. Um, you can also, again, if you have fancy, fancy furniture, you can get a beautiful wooden bass stand. Go to your local violin shop. Now, at my house, I'm a professional bassist, but I don't have any bass stands at my house. So what I do is I use a corner. If you have any kind of empty corner, and what I also do is I wrap a towel around the shoulders of the base and I just lean it in. Bridge first, that's the important thing. Don't try and do this with the bridge pointing out. It will not be stable at all. But if you think about it, look how great this is. Your dog can come running by, your cat, your little brother or sister. It's out of the way. No one's gonna trip over it. It's very stable. And since you would have wrapped a towel around it, not like me, you will be protecting your base from the walls and you're protecting your mom's paint job from the string base. So I think empty corners, great for storing bases. Now, in terms of transportation, we're not gonna talk about that in this video because putting a cello in a car, it's a little bit of a thing, not that big of a deal. Putting a string base in a car, it's its own thing. So next week, we're gonna do a video that's only about that. For right now, I hope you understand a little bit more about cases for cellos and string bases. 
and potential stands, ways you can store it, so they'll be out and you'll be inspired to grab them and practice every single day. As we say here at Have to Make Our Violins, practice on the days you like to eat. Now, go practice. I'm Anna Huffmaker with Huffmaker Violins. Thanks for your time.